وعليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. نحمده ونصلي على رسول النبي الكريم. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين. الرحمن الرحيم. مالك يوم الدين. إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين. إحنا السراط المستقيم. سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم بارك على سيدنا مولانا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وديائها وعلى آله وصحبه دائما أبدا صلاة وسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Today is the twenty eight of Rabi al Awal. And so, actually, today is the 27th of Rabi al Awal. Yeah, today is the 27th of Rabi al Awal. Uh, you know, which means tomorrow will be the 28th, and tomorrow night will be the 29th night, which may be the last night of this month of Rabi al Awal. And as we've been talking about, you know, this is the month of the birth of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ That uh, extol or, or um, propagate you know, the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you. So when He gives you a blessing, then you should be happy and show your happiness over it. You know, it's not just, oh, I'm happy in my heart and, and that's it. No, it's show your happiness over this. And, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives us everything. Everything is from Him. And that's something that all of us, we know, but we never think about. But the only thing that He actually, in the Quran, the only favor that He calls out in the Quran is the favor of sending Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done a great favor upon the believers. You know, and man is that type of favor beyond which there are no other favors. This is it. This is the extreme of favors. And he says, you know, because he, he gives us food, but he never calls, called it out in the Quran, that I've done a great favor by giving you food. You know, he mentions things in, in Surah Ar-Rahman. You know, he ments, mentions multiple things, and after everything he says, That which of the favors of your Lord do you deny? And interestingly, you know, even after he mentions the hellfire, he also asks, which of the favors of your Lord do you deny? Because for some people, they remember the hellfire and it keeps them straight. This is also a favor of Allah. But, you know, he mentions these favors, but he never calls out these favors. That I've done you this great favor. Except when he talks about Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That I have done a great favor to the believers, that I have sent amongst them a messenger. And not just a messenger, but the messenger. It's Rasulah. You know, this faith, this this messenger who is the messenger of the messengers. One of the points that we've talked about over the past three weeks that I said I would, be keep, I would keep coming back to is, you know, because there are people who object. When we talk about the birth of Rasulullah, they object. 
You know, and the objection is because, oh, you know, these are the same people whose ideology says that, oh, he's a human being like us. You know, if, you know, in mathematics, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. You know, it's simple math. You know, if A and B are equal and B and C are equal, then A and C are equal. So if I say that he's like me, what I'm really trying to say is that I'm like him. I mean, that's what it boils down to. And then they get into other things that, well, if I can make a mistake, then he can make a mistake. You know? If I can get angry over my personal issues, then he can get angry over his personal issues. All of which, you know, which we know are not true. But then their argument comes back as, well, you know, how can we follow someone who's not like us? You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, he says, wa Allah wa Rasul. You know, so they focus on this, wa Rasul. How can we follow someone who's not like us? You know, then you simply say, oh, you know, he's not like me. How can I do what he did? I mean, that's one of the arguments that they use. The problem with that argument is that it's human nature to follow someone better than yourself. I mean, if you look, even like in a workplace, you know, if your boss knows less than what you, what you know, as far as the job is concerned, that causes so much friction. And you start saying, ah, oh, you know, this guy doesn't know anything. Why is he the boss? Why should I be listening to what he's saying? Because it's nature to follow someone better than yourself. To look up to somebody who you think is better than yourself. You know, and in, and in the worldly sense, you know, we may not know whether this guy truly is better than me or not. When we're talking about Rasulullah Sallallahu there's no question. He is khayr khalqillah. He is the best of the creation of Allah. And everything other than Allah is, is the creation of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa ati Allah wa ati Rasul. That follow Allah and His Messenger. So am I going to say that, oh, how can I follow Allah because, you know, how can I follow someone who's better than me? Again, the arguments don't, don't add up. You know, they try to isolate following Rasulullah. So somebody in the Quran, Allah SWT doesn't simply say follow Rasulullah. He says follow Allah and His Messenger. <laughs> and then one place, he, he defines this for us, where he says that for sure, whoever follows the Messenger follows Allah. <coughs> That whoever follows the messenger without any doubt has followed Allah. So when we look at the birth of Rasulullah, it is not like our birth. When we look at his life, no aspect of his life is like my life. As far as the reality of it. In appearance, it may look the same. Because there are certain specific things where he says, you can't follow me in this. Simple example of that is fasting continuously without breaking the fast. And he would do that for 40 days or even longer. No water, no food, nothing. And when the companions, they try to follow him in this, and after a couple of days, they're falling out, and he asked me, he says, what are you doing? And the hadith is in Bukhari where, where they said, Ya Rasulullah, so some, we see you doing this and we want to emulate, we love you so much, we want to emulate you. We want to do what you're doing. And what does he say to them? He asked them a rhetorical question. He says, Ayyukum mithli. 
Are you like me? Means you're not like me. And then he explains to them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he feeds me and he, he gives me drink. Not the physical feeding and the drinking. But he has created him where he doesn't need these things. And yet we see him eating and we see him drinking. Why? To be an example for us that we can follow him. That when I eat, I eat like him. When I drink, I drink like him. You know, when we pray, what did he say? He says, pray as you see me pray. He didn't say pray like me, because we can't pray like him. His prayer is perfection. He is truly with his Lord. Our minds are wandering here and there. He is rahmatul alamin. He is, he is mercy to all of creation. So when he said pray, he didn't say pray like me. He says pray as you see me pray. So at least go through the motions that you see me doing. And if you do that with love, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it and, and fulfill your needs. You know, the goal of every believer, or the goal of every believer should be, I was about to say the goal of every believer is, but the goal of every believer should be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves him and forgives him. And so when the companions, when they came and asked Rasulullah Sallallahu Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu What can we do? How can we attain the love of Allah and attain His forgiveness? Two questions. Allah SWT sent one verse with a singular answer. And the verse starts off with Qul. Oh my beloved, you tell them. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have answered them directly, but he said no. He says, they've come to you, and also to emphasize that you are the means for this. Yeah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is ordering his beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to tell those who have asked him, to tell the believers, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ If you do that if you want to love Allah. You know, because the question was, how can we love Allah and how can we attain forgiveness? Actually, I, I think I said it backwards before. The question wasn't, how will Allah love us? It's, how can we love Allah? And how can we attain forgiveness? How can we have Allah forgive us? So the answer is, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ, تُ, إن كنتم تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ that if you want to love Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ You know, every place else in the Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa says, أَتِيُوا اللَّهِ وَأَتِيُوا الرَّسُولِ أَتِيُوا الرَّسُولِ Follow the messenger, follow the messenger. Obey the messenger. Here he doesn't say أَتِي he, he doesn't say أَتَعَ which is to follow. Because, you know, I have a boss and he tells me, okay, do this. Yeah. And I do it whether I want to do it or don't want to do it. Yeah. I go in, I do my job, I have no connection with the boss. Other than I'm doing what he's telling me to do. Don't care for the boss. Yeah. Don't really like the boss. I'm there to do my job, that's it. That's ata'ah. That's follow. Okay. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say follow. He doesn't say ata'ah. He says ittaba. You know, in Arabic, in the, the beauty of Arabic is that, you know, you can have 
one word that means a thousand things, and you can have a thousand things that are contained in one word. In one word. Yeah. Or you can have a thousand words for one thing, but each one has a slightly different meaning. <coughs> you know, a simple example, we talked about this a while back. You know, Abbas is lion, Asad is lion, Hadar is lion, Jafar is lion, Hamza is lion. Five words for lion. Yet each one has a slightly distinct meaning. Yeah. Jafar is the lion who is relaxing. The male lion who's relaxing, looking up, you know, making just. He's relaxing, but at the same time, he's still guarding the pride. Hamza is the lion who has spotted his prey. Abbas is the lion who, you know, he's, he's making his move upon his prey as he's roaring. And Hadar is the lion who is attacking continuously and never backing up. So again, many words for the same thing, but each with a very slight, with a dis distinct meaning to it. And the same thing, you can use that, you can use one word and then have it mean so many different things. You know, like dal. Dal can mean one who, can mean misguidance. Hmm? Dal can also be unique by yourself alone. Dal also is that tree in the middle of the, uh, of the uh, desert or, or the Sahara that the people use to, to, to find their direction. So one word, many meanings, many words, one meaning. This is one of the beauties of Arabic. So ata is simply to obey and follow, whether you want to or you don't want to. Ittaba is to follow, but th there's a prerequisite to that following. And the love. prerequisite to that following is love. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He doesn't say, tell them, follow me. He doesn't say, do ata'ab me. He says t that if you want uh, to love Allah, then, then, say to, then say, follow me, but first love me. And then when that love gets to such a level that love drives you to, to follow me, then that is ata, that is ittaba. So that love drives you to follow the one that you love. He says, فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ Allah." That if you do this, if you do ata, if you do ittaba of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, I will love you. Allah will love you. فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ Allah That you will become the beloved of Allah. 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 You know, the question was, how can we love Allah? And for the true lovers, they understand that it's better to be loved than to love. Even though for the true lover, he automatically loves anyway. But he understands that if, if the one that he loves does not reciprocate that love, that's worse than death. And so the companions, they come to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and say, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how can we become the lovers of Allah? Well, maybe that you love Allah, but maybe Allah doesn't love you. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gives them an answer better than what they had asked. He says, if you do this, then yeah, you are, you, you are the love of, of Allah, but now Allah will love you. Because you love Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he will forgive your sins. Wallahu 
Say, my beloved, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that if you want to love Allah, then do ittaba. And, and you know, the problem is there's no real one word in English that can translate this accurately. You know, the easy, the, I guess the best way to really to understand it is, you know, if you want to love Allah, then follow Rasulullah with love. And then Allah will love you and forgive your sins, and Allah is forgiving and merciful. merciful. Somebody loves me and follows me doesn't mean anything. That's not a criteria for the love of Allah. But the love of Rasulullah and following him with that love is a criteria for the love of Allah. It is the criteria for the love of Allah. It's not a criteria, it is the criteria. And how can you love somebody who you think, oh, he's like me? You know, again, if the boss, you know, doesn't know any more than I know, then there's no real attraction to him. You know, you have, a, you have somebody that you're trying to follow who who is brilliant, who knows his stuff, and at the same time he's very kind and humble. Your heart is naturally attracted to him. And when we talk about Rasulullah he is a mercy to all of creation. His humility is unmatched. Every aspect of him is unmatched. Which is why, and we'll talk more about this tomorrow, inshallah. You know, which is why if you read any description of him by anybody, whether it's say Ali or uh, his the do, the son of um, his wife Bibi Khadija, Radiana, uh, um, I'm blanking on his name suddenly. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad Or Ummu Ma'bad or anybody else whoever described him. All of them say that whoever saw him suddenly was in awe of him. Even his enemies when they saw him they were in awe of him. Because they've never seen such perfection. And this is why it is necessary for us to talk about him, to remember him. And this isn't just this isn't me saying this. I mean you read the Quran and throughout the Quran. I mean the whole Quran in reality is a conversation between Allah and His beloved. <laughs> and throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising him. Various words with meanings that, that go beyond our comprehension. You know, there are two verses in Surah Hazab where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces Rasulullah sallallahu but the interesting thing is that he starts off the introduction with Ya Ayyuhan Nabi, addressing Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean, normally, you know, if, if somebody were to, if I was to introduce, like, so and so is going to come and, you know, do this, and I come up here, and so, I, so I'm addressing the audience, I'm not addressing the person I'm introducing. You know, and when I introduce him, I haven't increased his knowledge in, at all. Nor have I increased my own knowledge because I'm only going to tell what I know. And if I'm accurately introducing him, then he already knows what his position is. 
You know, I said, okay, such and such is coming. He's gonna, you know, speak to us, and you know, this is his. These are his qualifications. He has a PhD in this, and degree in this, and he's done all of this research and this this work and that work. Again, the one being introduced, he already knows what he's done, or he already knows what his qualifications are. Yet, when Allah SWT introduces the Rasulullah SAW, he doesn't address the people. He addresses the Rasulullah SAW. Because the nature of people is that it doesn't matter what you say, there's always going to be somebody who disagrees. You know, if I say, you know, the sky is blue, there's always going to be somebody who's going to say, no, you know, technically it's this color, and, you know, or somebody who's colorblind, and he says, no, well, I look at it as yellow or green or whatever else. There's always going to be something. You know, and we see that today, you know, you go on the internet, and, you know, one person saying this and the other person saying the exact opposite. And it doesn't matter what the topic it is, wh whether it's religious, scientific, uh, you know, mathematics, anything. There's always somebody who's got a different, you know, perspective on it. And so when it comes to the beloved, Sallallahu doesn't address the people. Because if, we, if somebody comes and says, oh, I don't accept him as Nabi. Well, I'm not addressing you. Who cares? You accept him or don't accept him, it doesn't matter. So what is the definition of Nabi? The one who brings the knowledge of what? The knowledge of the unseen. So how can he bring the knowledge of the unseen if, he, if Allah SWT hasn't already taught him the unseen? So somebody can say, well, I accept him as Nabi, but I don't accept him as having the knowledge of the unseen. That means you don't have, you don't have no knowledge of what the word means. So it's Ya Yuhnabiyu Inna Arsalnaka that I have sent you. You are Rasul. Arsalnaka is from Rasul. It's messenger. You are the messenger. So somebody says, Well, I don't accept him as as a messenger. I don't accept him as bringing a message. Again, who's talking to you? Who cares what you think? Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala isn't addressing you. Big deal. Shahidam. You are a witness. What is the definition of a witness? You know, you, you think about it even, you know, in this world. You go to court and you say, I'm a, you go to, to the judge, say, I'm a witness. The judge asks you what? He says, well, did you see what happened? You say, no. Were you there? No. What's the judge say? Yeah. You're not a witness. It's just hearsay. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Rasulullah as shahid, as a witness over all of creation. So if somebody says, well, I don't accept that he, 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 you know, he uh, witnessed the creation of everything or that he was there before, that he is the first creation of Allah, because if you're going to witness all the rest of creation, you have to be the first creation. So somebody says, well, I don't accept him as any of these things. Again, who cares? Allah isn't addressing you. Mubashirun. The giver of glad tidings. He gives glad tidings to those who are the, who are the recipients of the glad tidings of Rasulullah The believers. So he has to know who the believers are in order to give them the glad tidings. So he already knows what's in my heart because iman or belief is a thing of the heart. You know, I can say all I want to, but if, I don't t if my heart doesn't testify to it, it's not belief. And the next one, Nadir, warner, warning to who? Those who do not accept him. So he has to know who don't accept him. Which is a very interesting point because if you look at his hijrah, when he immigrated from Mecca to Medina Munawwara, hmm? all of this done, was done under complete secret. Most of the people outside of Mecca did not recognize Rasulullah Sallallahu Of course, when they saw him, they were all in awe of him, even if they did recognize but it was you know, very secretive as to who would be allowed to know who he is. And if you read the history, 
everyone that he that he told that I am the messenger of Allah on this journey accepted him right away. How did he know who's going to accept him? Other than he's Bashir. And how did he know who was going to reject him other than he's Nadir? وَدَعَيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ بِإِذْنِهِ And he invites to, to, to Allah by Allah's leave. You know, because some people say, oh, you know, he preached to Abu Jahl, Abu Jahl didn't accept. Well, his job was to give the, give the message. <laughs> it is Allah's job to accept him or not. You know, he gave the message, the Rasulullah gave the message, but the one he gave the message to is the job of Allah to accept him or not to accept him. By the leave of Allah. Wasirajam Munira. You know, a cool lamp giving off light. So if somebody says, Oh, I don't accept him as Nur, I don't accept him as light. Well, again, who addressed you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya and Nabi. So if you disagree with it, doesn't matter. Two simple verses, very short verses. Surah Hazab, Surah number 33. Inshallah, I'll end here today. Uh, and, um, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our hearts with His true love and the true love of His beloved Prophet Muhammad, <laughs> his family, his companions, and all of those whom they love, inshallah. Those who have not made sunnah go and make sunnah, inshallah.